Welcome back guys, JimmyJewels153 here with another Dreams Logic video. Today we'll be looking at the joints and how to make doors swing open on a hinge. The most important thing I found when using the joints and creating a precise hinge is using the grid. We'll turn on the grid and just make a quick door shape here and we'll duplicate it so that we've got something to attach the door to. I'll be doing a separate video on the grid because it's very important to know how to use it and there's a few tricks that you'll need to know to get it to work the way that you want it to. Because the door is flat, we'll only be using the one plane of the grid, so you won't need to know these tricks just yet. So we've now got our door and our wall that we're going to attach it to, so we'll jump into the gadgets menu and grab out a bolt and stamp that down. Now when you first pull out the joint, you'll be stamping down the yellow parent node, and then next you'll stamp down the blue child node. The yellow parent node will set the item you stamp it to to be unmovable, and the blue child node will set the object you stamp it to to be movable. There'll be a purple node in the middle of them. The purple node is the part that turns, and you'll see this in just a moment. We'll jump into the guides here and turn on the stay upright guide, and the right angles sub guide under that. The stay upright guide will keep the object you grab in the upright position, and if you turn on right angles under that, it'll let you turn the object at 90 degree angles. Currently, if we were to turn the door, it'd spin vertically because the purple node is in the wrong position, so we need to turn this around 90 degrees. I'll grab the node and you'll see a circle pop up around it which indicates which way the joint will spin. We'll turn this around and I have a little bit of trouble here because I usually use the move controllers. So now if we move the child part of the door, it'll swing on the axis where we put the purple node. As you can see, the door can swing all the way around, which isn't really how a door works. So we'll jump into the tweak menu for the joint and see what we can do about that. In here, we've got a use limits option, which will let us set a limit on how far our door will swing. We'll go ahead and turn this on and you'll see a visual representation of the angle and the range of the limits. The yellow levers will change the range and the blue lever is the lever you need to place over the item you're moving. You'll see how this works in just a second. We want our door to swing from exactly where it is now, so we'll put the first limit to be on top of the door like so, and we'll move the blue lever over the top of the door as well. You can see in the tweak menu here we've got a few more options. Collide with connected will make the two objects we've attached with the joints hit each other if they were to collide. Because our door is right up against our wall, we want this turned off because otherwise it'll hit the door as it opens. We've also got the tightness, which will make the door easier and harder to open. If you find your door swinging about when you don't expect it to, you might need to tighten it up a bit. You can also turn this joint into a ball joint. It's currently set to a bolt, and you can set it to a motor bolt as well. The slider down here just changes the levers that we were pulling before. So you can see now with everything set up, when we move the door, the blue lever moves with it and stops when it hits the limits that we've set. The joints also have an output which you can hook up to things, like say the volume of a door squeaking. The motor bolt will be the same as the joint that we've made here, but it'll open and close the door without us having to move it, shown by the yellow line bouncing backwards and forwards between the limits. It'll also give us a couple more options, like the cycles per minute and the strength of the motor. The joints are super useful and I've used them in a lot of things so far. For the cupboards I used a setup that was exactly the same as in the tutorial here. And for the drawers I just used a slider which is basically just a piston that moves in and out. That's all for today's video guys, I'll see you in the next one.